With this Sunday, we begin the last Sunday of Lent, which of course is called Holy Week. It is called this because it is holy through Christ, who in it accompanied the work of our eternal redemption. Holy Week begins, of course, with Palm Sunday, where the procession of palms reminds us of the entry of our Lord into Jerusalem, where he was received with the loud hosannas and acclamations of the people. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is they that come in the name of the Lord. Today the Passion has been read to call our attention the Passion and Death of our Lord. The palms which have been blessed are sacramentals that we should keep in our homes on our mantelpieces or altars. Now the procession with palms is important. All with blessed palms go out of the church. The significance of this is important. Now the priest is the principal person in the procession represents Christ, the head of the church. Those in the procession must follow the priest, for Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We must follow him if we wish to be saved. The priest goes out of the church, whereby we are reminded of the mystery of the incarnation of Christ. For as the priest leaves the church, so too did the Son of God leave heaven becoming man and walking upon the earth. We leave the church, heaven as it were, as we walk out. By our sins we cannot get to heaven. It is only opened by true repentance. The palms that we carry are emblems of victory, achieved only a, over a hard struggle with the enemy. This sign of victory belongs principally to our Saviour, who has overcome the world and the devil. The palms carried by us represent that with Christ's grace we will wrestle with the enemies of our eternal salvation and thus gain the victory. Now on return after the procession, the door of the church is shut. This signifies the gate of heaven which has been barred against mankind since the fall of Adam. The cross bearer knocks three times with the foot of the cross on the door, and the door opens and the procession enters. The cross on which Christ died is the key that opens for us the portals of heaven. The three knocks signify the three years of Christ's public life and the three hours on which he hung on the cross, enduring such pain for our sins. As we hear in St Matthew chapter 11, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent bear it away. By an easy, indulgent life, one can never enter heaven. And the return of the church signifies, return to the church, signifies the triumphant entry of Christ into heaven, 40 days after his resurrection, Ascension Thursday. And not only did he enter heaven, but all those who lived under the old law and awaited his entrance in limbo entered heaven. The faithful who followed the priest into the church, just as the righteous followed Christ into heaven. This procession also reminds us of Christ's triumphant entry into heaven after the last judgment. This will be the last and most solemn procession and triumphant train. The divine saviour, surrounded by countless angels, as conquerors over sin, death and hell will go before, and all the saints of God will follow him in dazzling array, with glittering crowns on their heads and the palm of victory in their hands, and singing canticles of joy as they enter the heavenly Jerusalem. Now which of us would not wish to participate in such a procession? By following Christ faithfully on the way of the cross, we render ourselves worthy to follow him in his triumphant entry into heaven. Remembering as the church teaches, nothing defiled shall enter heaven. Also today, the passion of Saint Matthew is read. Why is the passion read today? Why is it read today and not later on in the week? Some might say that our Saviour did not commence it today, but his passion on a holy Thursday. Today, remember his triumphant entry into Jerusalem 
and possession with palms, but why the passion? The church intends us to remember the fickleness of the Jews who would one day acclaim as his king and five days later clamour for his execution. Hosanna shouted today and five days later clamouring for his execution. Oh, that we may not have this fickleness of faith, that after a season of penance we return to any bad ways. Let us today, when the passion is read uh, to us, make a firm resolution at this holy time of Easter to devote great attention to the worthy reception of the holy sacraments and persevering and leading a penitential life. Now the significance of the ceremonies at the reading of the Passion. As we know, there were no candles carried at the reading of the Passion, done to indicate the extinction of the light of the world and the death of Christ. Let us think of the death of our Lord and ask him to grant us the grace to make a holy and happy end. No blessing is implored as usual as one does before the Gospel that the priest may worthily and suitably announce the word of God. But he begins at once to read the Passion, to signify that Christ, whom we have lost by his death on the cross, all graces are taken from us. Christ being the source of grace, if we have him not with us, nothing we can do can produce fruit, like branches separated from the tree. Consider this not to lose him by mortal sin, or if lose him, seek him without delay by good confession and contrition. The Passion does not begin with the words Dominus Fabiscum, and these words are not said because our Lord was betrayed by Judas, saying, Hail Master, and betrayed him with a kiss. Let us reflect if we have made any bad communions and repent of them if we have asked our Lord to enter into an unclean heart. Let us make reparation for those that commit this horrible treason of Judas and sacrilege to the Blessed Sacrament. And during the, can, during the, um, the Passion, as we hear it, at the passage at the death of Christ, we all kneel down. We bow our head and adore him who is infinite love died for us on the cross. We all kneel down and remember. And of course, the book is not kissed at the end, nor is Laos Tibi Christe said. And we keep silent on account of the taunting and blasphemies of our Lord, which he received from those Jews and those people during his passion and death. Reflect upon this and keep away from those who would scoff at our holy Catholic faith and Holy Mother the Church. For those that mock the Holy Faith mock our Lord himself who founded the Church. And if at any time we are mocked for our Catholic faith, let us think ourselves worthy to suffer ignominy for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I exhort you in this coming Holy Week to devoutly meditate on the passion and death of our Lord and consider how dearly he has loved you and at what price he has ransomed your soul. Such a reflection should lead us to thank him, love him, and henceforth devote our lives to him. How happy will you be if now and forevermore you give yourselves without reserve to Jesus, one's Lord and God. You will enjoy the sweetest peace here and have the blessed hope that after these fleeting years, one will reign with Christ in the kingdom of heaven for ever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.